Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. In this tutorial, we explain how to create a simple large language model application that can be executed in a web browser. The application is based on Python, OLAMA framework for running large language models, LAMA 3.1 open source large language model and Streamlit for embedding the application in a web browser and for building a graphics user interface which you can see over here. A nice feature of this application is that we are using our computer resources to generate the response. That is, large language model is running behind the scenes on our local GPU. And here is a brief demonstration. Over here, I will ask a question. Can you help me to learn how to code? And after I click the submit button, this text will be submitted to our large language model that's running on our local computer. And only after several seconds, the response is generated and the response is shown over here. This is truly amazing. So what's happening behind the scenes? You probably think that we will need two, three hundred lines of code to generate our application and to run a large language model. Well, if you think like that, you're wrong. The code is maybe 20 to 25 lines long, and here it is. Of course, behind the scenes, there are a lot of things that are happening and we had to install OLAMA and to download our model. However, once you do that, you can very easily and quickly write this application. And in this tutorial, I will teach you how to write the application. Okay, let's start with the explanations. The first step is to go to this website and to download and install OLAMA. To do that, you simply need to click on the download button, you need to click on Windows and click on download for Windows and the download process will start. It's going to take a while to download OLAMA and to install it, so be patient. Next, go to the downloads folder and start this file. By starting this file, you're going to install OLAMA. Click on install and be patient. After installation completes, you can click over here and you can see this small cute icon. And if you click, you'll see that Olama is running in the background. Good. The next step is to download the model. However, we first need to search for an appropriate model. In this video tutorial, I will be using Llama 3.1, however, you can use any other large language model. To search for a model, you need to click here and search Llama 3.1. Here it is. Then, select the size of the model. I'm going to use 8 billion parameter model. And over here, you will see that a message, or better to say a command, will be generated. We need to execute this command in a command prompt in order to install Llama 3.1. So let's open a command prompt. And in this command prompt, let's first verify that Olama is installed. To do that, type Olama and you should see this response. Next, in this command prompt, you can execute this command. However, I'm not, I'm not going to exactly execute this command since this command will download and then run the model. I just want to download the model for the time being. And to download the model, I just need to replace run by pull. And this will download the model. Now, the process of downloading the model might take even several minutes. This is mainly because this model is relatively large. That is around 5 gigabyte. So be patient and wait until everything is being pulled. After the download process is completed, let's verify that the model exists. To do that, first type Olama list and you should see the model. Next, let's run the model in order to test it. To run the model, you need to type Olama run 
and then you need to specify the name of the model and here it is and just wait for a while and let's ask this model a question for example how are you and then you can see the answer this means that the model is working next let's exit this command prompt and let's continue with installation of our virtual environment and the necessary libraries the first step is to create our workspace folder I usually do it like this I go to my C drive then over here I usually create a folder called codes however I'm not going to execute this command since I already have the folder codes and you should execute this command after executing this command navigate to the codes folder and inside let's create our base folder I'm going to call the folder as test stream lit here it is so let's navigate to this folder and inside of this folder we are going to create a Python virtual environment for those of you who are not familiar with Python virtual environments Python virtual environments are environments in which you can specify and customly install all the packages that is you're going to decouple your base Python environment which is run by just running Python with a customly defined environment. It's a very good practice to create custom Python environments. So let's create this environment. To do that, we need to execute this command. Python with an option M, then we need to execute this command venv, and we need to call our environment. The name will be environment1. And you need to wait for several seconds. And if you now list the content of the folder, you will see that our environment one folder is created and all the packages will be installed inside. To activate our environment, we need to execute this command. Here it is. And you, you can notice that over here, you can see environment one. This means that our environment is active. Now you can type pip list and you will see that we only have a single package and that's the package for installing packages that is our pip or pipe however you like to pronounce it. the first step is to install Python Olama API to do that we need to type pip install oops Olama and here it is after that we need to install streamlit to do this, we need to type pip install stream lit, and here it is. The next step is to write our code. For that purpose, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, however, you can use any Python editor. To run Visual Studio Code, I will type code and dot, and here it is. Let's create a new file. File, new file and I will call the file test1.py and I will save it in my base folder here it is over here to save time I'm going to simply paste the content of my code and I will explain it line by line let's start over here we import the necessary libraries first we need to import streamlit as st then we need to import olama and over here we need to set the model name in my case, the name of model is Llama 3.18b. And over here, I need to show you something. This model name has to precisely match the name of the model that you will see by typing list Olama in the command prompt. Actually, it's Olama list to be more precise. And here it is. Consequently, type Olama list, then copy this model over here and then simply paste the name over here. Now the model name is set. Over here you can define the title of your application. I wrote our first large language model web application based on Llama, running locally and streamlined. After that you need to write a function that will call the model. That is, after we press the submit button this function will be called. This function will run our large language model. Inside, 
we run olama.chat, then we specify model is equal to the desired model, and over here we pass the message. In this dictionary, we actually specify the message. Our role is the user, and here is the content. The content is question to ask. This is a string that's typed in our web application. Namely, when the user writes text, this text is converted to string, then it's being passed as question to ask, and over here we form this data structure, and after that, this data structure with the question is sent to our large language model. Large language model computes the response and saves the response over here. To display this response in our menu, we need to call st.info and then we need to format the response. To extract the response, we need to re write response, message, and then content. And that's it. Okay, over here we generate our application with st.form, my form. Then we specify the text, text area, and this is the default text. That is, first time you start application, this text will be shown. And after that, we need to define what happens once the user writes or better to say types or better to say presses the submit button then we say form submit button we created here and then submitted returns a boolean variable if the button is being pressed then submitted becomes yes or one and if submitted then we call the function that is we execute our large language model and we pass the text that's being specified by the user. And that's it. Simple as that. Nothing special. Make sure that you save this file. Then you can close Visual Studio Code and let's learn how to run our application. We need to execute this file. However, we need to execute it by using Streamlit Run. So let's do that. And here it is. Now, once I press enter, you will see what happens. Here it is. The application automatically opens in our web browser. That is in our default web browser. And over here, you can see the address of our application. Now, let's go back to the web browser and let's see what's happening over here. We can see our local URL and we can see our network URL. And you over here, you can see the actual port. And now we can run our application. We can simply ask a question over here. Hello, how much is 2,456 multiplied by, by 10? Let's see. And let's type submit. And let's see what's happening. Now you can see that the response is generated and the response is obviously accurate. If we go now back to our terminal, nothing changed. So let's ask another question. Hello, are you running on a GPU? And let's see what happens. I'm not running on a GPU in the classical sense. I exist as a cloud-based AI service that uses a combination of CPU and other resources to power our conversations. And you can see the explanation. And that's it. In this tutorial, we explained how to create our first large language model web application that's based on Llama large language model and Streamlit. In our next tutorial, we will explain how to do more advanced things, such as creating a retrieval augmented generation application by using Streamlit.